Hi, this is Randy Rice of Rice Consulting Services and riceconsulting.com with another video in the series of software testing concepts and principles. The reason I'm doing this series is so that we can kind of look at the reason why we do some of the things we do in software testing. Today's topic is about regression testing and I think we've all seen the need for regression testing. Uh, it really it doesn't mean that you retest everything you've tested before although if the risk is high that may be where you're at like that's what they used to do with the space shuttle uh, software but most people aren't the space shuttle so we can typically get by with a little less than testing everything every time we test but but the problem is is that basically every time a change is made to software it invalidates previous tests that you've done because of the unknown impact. Uh, so we're, we're actually focusing on trying to keep defects out of the software as the result of making a change. And I know from my developer days I would call this the I just changed one line of code syndrome. So as an example, uh, I just kind of want to run through a couple of scenarios quickly with you here uh, to show that the contrast of not doing regression testing and doing regression testing. So uh, let's say that we have uh, these three uh, test cases uh, over here and then we're going to do three cycles of testing but we're not going to do any kind of regression testing. So in our three test cases the first one passes, the second one fails, and the third one passes. So for only testing the failures and fixes then we would report uh, that second test case as a failure and hopefully someone would fix it. Now in the second cycle of testing though we don't test case one because we're only testing the fixes so we test that fix and we realize that oh it failed so okay so we report it again but the thing that we don't realize because we're only testing the fix is that now a new problem has been introduced. You might think of this as like a hidden bug. And so we do another round of testing. Uh, we don't test the first case because we're only testing fixes. We do test the second case and we do learn that that fix did work so we have a pass. And then the third case we don't know about because once again we didn't test it. Well, in this scenario, we release the software or this release to our customers or users and they find the bug in test case three or that would be revealed by that functionality. And they may call us up and say, hey, Randy, I thought you tested that. And I would say, well, well, yeah, I did test it back in test cycle A. But the problem is, once again, that fix introduced the new problem. So without testing all of our core cases, the ones that we really need to test, we really don't have a very good assurance when we actually do release if minor fixes or even major fixes have been made unless we test our regression suite. Now let's take a contrasting picture of uh, where we are doing regression testing and we have the same basic scenario, three test cases and in the first cycle of testing we test all three and we have the same situation, a pass, a fail, and a pass. Now, in the second cycle of testing, we're going to retest test case one because uh, it's a regression case and it passed, so that's a good uh, verification. Test case two uh, was supposed to be fixed, but we learn that it's not. And we test test case three as well, and now we pick up on the regression defect. Uh, so we not only failed to fix the problem of case two but now a second one has been introduced and this is a dynamic that nearly every tester that I know of has seen in, in their experience so uh, the third cycle of testing uh, we've reported now both of these failures uh, we do this third cycle to, to test any fixes and the first case passes the second case now passes which is great news and the third case passes. So the difference is now that when we release the software in, in this case uh, we have the assurance at least that the key cases and the key functions are going to work uh, 
that we expect to work. Now, once again, this doesn't mean that all functions are going to work because typically what you do with regression testing is you test a lot of the ordinary, a lot of the important functionality, a lot of the high risk functionality, but maybe not a lot of the complex functionality. Uh, when you think about something like Microsoft Word, for example, there are some critical things that if it doesn't do just immediately uh, out of the gate, you know you're in trouble, such as opening and closing files, saving files. You might not be so concerned with mail merge right away. You might not be uh, so concerned with uh, smart art uh, right away. Uh, those things would be probably prioritized on the lower end of the scale and, and maybe not be a regression test. But you can see kind of the dynamic here of the, the level of assurance that you have between doing regression testing and not doing regression testing. Well, I hope this kind of gives you at least a, a, a good rationale for why we need to do regression testing. If you want more information like this, come by my website, riceconsulting.com. Uh, also, I would love to have you sign up for my newsletter right down below this video. You'll see the link for that. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and I'll have another one very soon.